Today we are going to reconstruct a pattern for this skirt. I have chosen a template for an airline skirt from the database. I can change the angle of the side seam using this variable. This template sends notifications to console. It tells us that the front dart was closed completely. The front skirt was then spread to provide for the desired flare. The dart back was closed partially. We need to draft the style lines of this pattern on a whole skirt, not a half of it. I am going to mirror the required objects against the center line. First, the front skirt. I shall mirror objects against center front. I double click objects to add them to the list, and hold shift if I want a comma to be inserted. The curves and points have been mirrored. The mirrored objects got new names with an N at the end. Now to the back skirt. I use mirror function again, and mirror objects against center back. Since the back dart was not closed completely, I am copying both parts of the waistline and the dart point. Let's add a suffix so that we get a set of separate objects with new names. If we don't mention a suffix or a new name, the original objects will be mirrored. We'll end up with one of the halves again. And this is not what we want. We need both the original objects and those on the left side. Now that we have the full skirt pattern on our screen we can start drafting. The first reference point we need is the upper point of this flounce. I assume it starts below the dart point and goes towards hem. The first step is to define the line on which such a point will lie. I start at V2 and use the function cut to find the opposite point of such a line. I move down from point V2. In order to follow the shape of this skirt, we don't just move vertically down, but a bit to the side. Vertically down would be 90 degrees. I add half of the flare angle clockwise. Let's see. The upper point of the flounce will be somewhere on this line. I shall use apply function to locate it at half the distance between V2 and V3. If we translate this line of code, it says, in order to place point V4, start at V2 and apply the distance between V2 and V3, multiplied by 0.5, at the direction towards point V3. The point has been placed. The left edge of the flounce will be curved between point V4 and the outer point of hem, LS1N. Let's draw this curve. We start at LS1N and go to V4. The curve will start at the same angle as the original hem line. We can thus be sure that after we sew side seams together, the bottom edge of the skirt will be smooth, with no corners or bumps. LS1N highlights in orange. This means it is the second point of the original curve. We have thus referred to A2, the second angle of this curve. Now to the other end of our new curve. I want our curve to be perpendicular to the line between V3 and V2. I thus refer to the direction from V3 to V2 using points A1 property. We now need to add 90 degrees clockwise. Very nice. Now let's find the point where the flounce crosses the side seam. I use apply function again and define this point on the line between the hem edge and the hips point. To place it higher or lower on the side seam I can edit my formula. Let's imagine the top layer of the skirt as a whole. It forms one continuous curve above the back hem and the front hem. The curves passes smoothly across the side seam, with no corners or bumps. Most likely it is not perpendicular to the side seam and is directed upwards from back to front. To make it more visual, I am going to move around the back part and attach it to the front part. We shall be able to work with this curve as a whole then. The shift function moves the mentioned objects along a line. It means that all the objects will be moved at the same time, at the distance that equals the angle of this line, and at the direction from the first point to the second point of this line. Sounds complicated, but let's see it on the screen. 
I shall include the hem of the back part to make it more visual. As you can see, we shifted the back hem and the hip point. Imagine that you held down these curves with your fingers and moved them all together at the same time, in such a way that the ends of the front hem and the back hem are the same place. We now need to match the side seams of the back and of the front. Let's rotate the object so that the side seams are together. We shall rotate the objects around the bottom end of the hem, and we need to close this angle between the hip points of the back and on the front. After we rotate, they will end up in the same place. The angle function lets us get the angle inside three points. The middle point mentioned is the corner point. Great, we have matched the hems and the side seams. The bottom edge of the back upper skirt will pass somewhere here. We now need to decide what's the angle of this curve at the side seam. I shall add the middle point of the back hem to our shift and rotate function. Then I will be able to direct one of the ends of the curve there. L2 has been moved together with the rest of the back hem. The bottom edge of the upper back skirt will pass between V5 and LS2N. I want the curve to start towards center back point L2, and then draw it smoothly until it joins the end of the back hem. The curve will start at V5. It will end at LS2N. We shall start drawing it towards L2. I thus refer to direction from V5 to L2 in my code. We want this curve to match the direction of the back hem at the end. I refer to the first angle of the left part of back hem, the first one, because the curve is directed towards L2, and its first point LS2N highlights in violet, and not in orange. Here is our nice and smooth edge of back upper skirt, let's join it with the front part. The second part of the front hem of upper skirt will go from V4 to V5. I am using the angles of the adjoining curves, so that this missing curve will form one continuous path with the rest of upper skirt. Don't forget to add 180 degrees to make the direction of the control points opposite. At any time we can return to our formulas higher in the code and tweak them as we see fit. If you change positions of the control points, you don't need to redraft the curves. They will be adapted by the software automatically. Now that the curves have been matched, we need to return the objects in place. I repeat shift and rotate function, just vice versa. First let's rotate the object back. As the direction is counterclockwise, the angle should be negative. This time I have one more object to handle. It is the back hem of the upper skirt that we have just drawn. I add minus to reverse the direction of rotate function. We now need to shift the objects back, so that L2 for example lies on the center back seam. Again we add the new object to the list. Last time we shifted from LS1 to LS2. Unfortunately LS2 is now at the same place as LS1 and we can't do it this way anymore. No need to panic. We shall create a copy of LS2 before we even shift it, so higher in the code. I use the copy function and I make sure it is higher than the shift and the rotate.
For copied points got suffix underscore C, this is the default option for copy function. We can now shift our objects from ls1 to ls2 underscore C. All parts of our pattern are now in place. As there is a zipper planned in center back seam, we shall need to separate pattern blocks for right upper skirt and left upper skirt. The hem of the upper skirt thus needs to be divided into two. I shall use the cut function. From point H2 we shall move vertically down, at 90 degrees, where this vector intercrosses the new back hem, a new point will be places, let's say L21. The first part and the second part will become separate objects and will get new names. You can see that the back hem curve stayed, it was not deleted. When we hover again we can see the new objects, back hem 1 and back hem 2. Let's direct our attention to the front skirt. The left part of it is a regular flared skirt, the right part however is much more flared. I shall split this curve in two so that I can handle its sections separately. I use the cut function again. Again we cut a curve from a higher point moving vertically down at 90 degrees. The two sections of the curve will be saved as new objects with new names. I am going to use spread function for the right upper skirt. However spread works with singular objects. I shall unite these two portions into one continuous path. I won't need the parts of this path later, just the path itself. I shall thus the excessive objects from my draft. Here's our continuous path. On paper you would do tapered spread. In Soist Pattern Designer there's a specific function for that. The inner part of the spread will be the right waistline. The outer part of the spread will be the bottom edge of upper skirt. This is the path we have just created. The side seam of the skirt should be included in the spread function. We now mention, first, the inner side of the spread, and second, the outer side of the spread. All other objects in the list will be adjusted accordingly. Spread function allows to add spread to the left and to the right. Let's say 20 degrees both ways. The right upper skirt was spread all right, but it is now placed so that we won't be able to trace our pattern. We need the left edge of the spread to stay in place. So let's mention 0 degrees for the left spread angle, and the total of 40 degrees for the right spread angle. We can now draft the waistline. I am going to move the waistline of the skirt down towards hip level using this variable. This is the distance for which the waistline was moved down. Looks okay. We can always check it later on small paper preview and on muslin. To draft the waistband, I simply refer to a template from the menu. I want the waistband to be wider. The template tells us there is a variable we can tweak. It is not mandatory to mention everything as percentages and formulas. It is just the way I work. You can easily set belt width to 5, and the waistband will then be 5 cm wide for any size. It is just that I always remember that the pattern can be drafted for someone 190 cm high and 140 cm high. A waistband that is 5 cm wide will look very different on ladies of these heights.
some final touches. If you are not happy how spread function changes the dynamic of a curve, you can redraft it. I am going to draft a new curve from L11 to the last point of my spread hem of upper skirt. It is not shown as a red point on the screen, but I can refer to it using property point P2. I will match the curve to the slope of the hem on the left front skirt. I refer to the second angle of this curve and add 180 degrees, as my curve is drafted from L11 and not towards L11. For their other end I use the same slope as the spread hem. I refer to it using property A2. These coefficients will make my new hem smoother at the start and more dramatic at the end. To keep this video shorter I have traced all the pattern blocks behind the scenes. For more information on tracing patterns, please see our previous videos, or so as pattern design documentation. Oops, we have drafted well looking at the picture, but we are going to place the blocks at the wrong side of the fabric, so they need to be mirrored. Here's how we do this. First, give names to the patterns as shown, then you can mirror them, for example against the center front line and the center back line. We use the same mirror function and put the name of the pattern blocks in the list of the objects. Now the line against which we shall mirror the pattern. That's it. The pattern block is mirrored together with all its texts, notches, marks etc. We shall repeat this for the upper backs. The last thing, we need to spread not only the upper skirt, but the lower skirt as well. I am going to spread the mirrored part of it. The contour of the piece to be spread is traced clockwise. Some of the objects were directed in the opposite way, so I added minuses before their names. Looks good. As always I will check the number of pieces to be cut in this preview. It looks I forgot to trace my waistband. And I forgot to include the dart on the right upper back skirt. Sometimes it is easier to see these flaws in a monochrome picture. We'll go edit now. And now to the fun part. Let's grade our pattern into multiple sizes with merely a couple of mouse clicks. I hope you enjoyed our video. Stay tuned at Soist.com Pattern Design Channel. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer these in comments. Happy sewing.